Simply put, do you have liberty over love or love over liberty? Now, let me ask you a question. How many of y'all are having trouble with staying away from meat offered to sacrifice to idols? Nobody. I'm glad nobody raised their hand because that would really be weird, okay? We don't, have any, we don't even have any idol temples as far as I know in Southern West. We don't have any temples to Zeus or Mars or Jupiter or any of those sort of things. So I don't really know that that's an issue in our nation. In, in Southern West Virginia, anyhow. But there's lots of other things that people have questions about. And I'll mention several as we go through the message today. And I'm, the ones I'm missing are just the ones that I've heard preached against in churches. And then in other churches, it's not an issue at all. For instance, like this. It, is it okay for Christians to have cell phones? Now, there's lots of churches that think, they're very clear on that. The answer is no. Cell phones hooked to the internet. The internet is where gambling and pornography is. And so, no Christian should ever have a cell phone. Well, I don't feel that way. I, don't, I have a liberty to own a cell phone. But what do I do when I'm around people that believe that? How do you behave yourself? That's just one. That, that's a new one, but it's still one that, that's come up. And there are people very... You can't say, well, they're just dumb. Are they really just dumb? You will call them dumb that Jesus Christ died for? They may be far more spiritual than I am or any of you. They may pray more, love Jesus Christ more. They just do not have a liberty to have internet. And they think that's a sin for people to do that. It's not been that long ago. It's still preached against in some of the churches for people to have a television. After all, didn't Jesus say television to no man? <laughs> Actually, he said tell the vision to no man, but still. Uh, but Jesus did. So people say that. Or, Lord, I, it's always got a good amen in some of the churches I've grown up in. You know, so, or not, I just went to one church, but sometimes when visiting preachers come, you shouldn't have one of them old TVs. You can see the devil's tail hanging out your window. Hey! Of course, you don't have no devil's tail hanging out your window no more. Nobody uses antennas, but I mean, so you hide and you say, I don't know. But there's still a lot of people that think that's wrong for Christians on a television. So are they just stupid? I don't think so. I think that some of them may be some of the best Christians I know. They, they'll pray for you. They won't forget to pray for you. They'll love you. They'll come and see you when you're sick and take care. I mean, they're good people, man. They've been changed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So, 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 you, you and, and now you say, well, but all of us are, no, we fine with having a cell phone, fine with having a, a television, but some of the things I'm going to talk about today, you might not be fine with. But lots of other people in the church are fine with, and lots of churches have no issues. Some churches put you out of the church for some of the things. But guys, you got to understand, we need to have Love over love. So let's read verse 1, 2, and 3, and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Now, touching things offered unto idols. So he's, when he starts out this way, he says, now touching things. He's answering the next question, and this question will take several pages, the next three chapters. This question about what are we free to do? We know that we all have knowledge. You're very, you're very knowledgeable Christians. Nobody's putting down your knowledge. In fact, the Corinthians said, well, we have all kinds of knowledge. We are a great church. And Paul said, oh, really, you're a church full of problems, but I still want to present you as a bride virgin before an almighty God. But he says this. Are you ready? Knowledge puffeth up, but love, charity, edifieth. It builds up. So Paul is using two things here that makes things get bigger. Knowledge can puff up, blow it up. Or if you've ever been in a fight or, or had an automobile accident or something, you see parts of your body just swells up, it puffs up. But it really is not a good thing, is it? But charity actually builds up. Now I like to say this, you don't want to puff up, you do want to build up, so hopefully someday you will grow up and be right. But if any man think that he knoweth anything, 
You act like you're smarter than everybody else. And that may be your attitude toward the two things I just mentioned. Well, they're just dumb. They're not smart like me. He knoweth nothing as he ought to know. You're just a smart aleck. But if any man love God, you're talking about knowing something, the same is known of him, of God. I'm so glad, I can preach all day about it. I'm so glad that I know God. <laughs> and I'm even gladder, more glad, whatever your proper grammar is, I'm just so thrilled that God knows me, Brother Danny. And I'll be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I pray today that as we look at these uncomfortable things today, Lord God, that we will have the grace that Paul's telling us to do here to have love over liberty. Father, I pray that you bless this congregation today. Certainly, Lord, I want them to have great knowledge. But I want their knowledge to be ruled by holiness and love. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will give us knowledge of your word, that we can understand your word and be more like you. Certainly less like ourselves anyhow. Father, I pray that you would help us to do your will. But Father, I pray that our knowledge will not puff us up, but rather, Lord God, that our knowledge would cause us to grow up, to build up in love. Father, I pray today for all these prayer requests that have been mentioned, so many, Lord God, and people in our own church that are sick right now hurting. I pray, Lord God, you know our heart. You know, Father, I pray for these in Jesus' name. Father, I pray today that you would bless the ones in our church who have lost loved ones. Brother Tony reminds us so often of Brother Calvin to pray for their lost family. And I know we all desire that, though, Lord of God. Please burden our lost loved ones to be saved before it's everlasting too late. Father, help us to be faithful to you to the very end. And we're going to thank, we thank you, Lord of God, for what we're about to receive from your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So these are, the, this is the whole slide presentation this morning, just these two slides here. Here's what you've got to keep in mind. These five core questions will help you answer whether or not Christians can go to the beach. Can Christian women cut their hair? I mean, you know, lots of things. And I'm going to go through it. By the time I get through today, if I ain't got on you yet, you're going to be saying, oh, everybody knows that one's wrong. And all the other things are right, Daniel, but everybody knows that one's wrong. You're wrong, you know. I'm not telling you what I think's right and wrong. I'm just telling you what the Word of God does not commend and it does not condemn. And then you've got to use these things to make up your mind. Does this, I mean, excuse me, is this expedient? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, all, all the answers are found here in 1 Corinthians. Chapter 6, Paul said this. All things are lawful to me. He doesn't have any hang-ups. Paul had very little hang-ups about anything. Now, I'd say hang-ups because it's very serious to people that really believe this. It's very insulting maybe if you call them hang-ups. So I'll try not to say it. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful unto me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Number so 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 here's a question. Is it expedient? Is this helpful or is it just desirable? Is this important or is it something that will eventually, as Paul says, weigh us down? The writer of Hebrews says we do not want to be held down by any weight or sin. So the writer of Hebrews separates that. Did I just say be held down by sin? As we run our race through this world, he said, any weight that might hold us back. Number two, question to ask yourself, or as a family to discuss, is this edifying of other believers? Oh, excuse me, no, I'm sorry. Is this a good example? Is this a good example? I have a good different list to have them disordered here. Is this a good example? All right, right here where we're at, chapter 8, verse 10. If any man see thee, which has knowledge, you have knowledge, set it meet in the idol's temple. Whoa, 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 whoa. You may not be aware of this because we don't have idols. 
The reason that people were asking this question, can we eat meat offered to idols, is there were basically in every city in the Roman Empire, there were two places to buy meat. You could buy it at the meat market, or you could buy it more cheaply at the shambles. That's not what I call it. That's what it's called when people would go to offer to idols. They would part of it would go home with them, part of the sacrifice, part of it would be burned up to Zeus or Apollos or Venus or whoever is burning. Part of it would go to the priest. Well, the priest, if they had five sacrifices that day, they can't eat all that meat. So they would sell it at the market and it would be cheaper. One thing I know about these Christians at this church, y'all love a bargain, don't you? <laughs> yes, sir. So their question is, and but also there was another thing, that's what he's talking about here. You would actually go into the idol's temple, and it was a restaurant. I don't know exactly how it was set up, but you could actually go into almost any large idol temple, and you could go have the meal there. And it would be very cheap. So... Of course, there was no refrigeration, so everything had to be taken care of, whether it's at the meat market or at the shambles. Okay, so if you get, some man goes in, and they see you there, you're setting the meat in the idol's temple. Shall not the conscience of him that is which is weak, talk about another Christian, be emboldened. It's the same word as edify in verse 1 that we talked about. Build up. Would you not build up their conscience to eat those things that are offered to Now, if you want to build up people in the right way, let's just say you want people to be stronger. They, they really think it's a, it's a tremendous sin for women to wear slacks. Now, that's still a big in lots of churches in our area. For women to wear slacks, much less wear slacks to church, but wear slacks, period. So you don't want somebody to be offended by you. At the same time, you want them to see that it's not a sin, so you do want to build them up, but you want to be careful because, verse 11, and through thy knowledge shall the weaker brother perish. That's serious business for whom Christ died. Jesus died for this woman, this man. And I've had people be very bitter about this. Now, I don't care what they say. I remember one deacon in a church. I was just a kid, maybe 20, 21 years old, preaching from 1 Corinthians. And uh, I've mentioned that some people that I knew are very serious about not drinking coffee. Now, you got to understand, the deans, that's awful because we start drinking coffee when we're born. I mean, by the time you're three years old, you got it in your sippy cup. I mean, we, we, lo don't, we love our coffee, you know. This guy says after church, he's thinking, well, I'll tell you what I'd do. If I never felt that way, I'd go right up to him. I'd have my coffee in my hand. I'd just let him see how good I was. Even as a young preacher, I knew that that deacon was wrong to go try to hurt someone else. You know, Christ died for that person. Well, we'll be talking more about this as we go. Okay. All right. So then number three. Number three, four, and five. Does this edify other believers? That takes us back to our first verse we read there in chapter 8, verse 1. Charity edify. Does this really edify other believers? That's what basically chapter 8 is about. Love over liberty. Uh, chapter 10, verse 23. I wrote that one down. I wrote all these down that's inside chapter 8, 9, and 10. Because that's, that's what the big question is for the next three chapters. See, chapter 10, verse 23. All things are lawful for me. Paul says the same thing he did earlier. But all, all things are expedient. But here he goes further. All things are lawful, but all things edify not. They don't build up other Christians. Number four. Does this hinder evangelism? Does this hinder evangelism? Hmm. Chapter 9, verse 20. Let's look at that. 21. Paul's answering this question about giving up some of his own liberties. He says, Unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law as without the law. Now, he wants to explain in parentheses. 
but not without law to God. I didn't become lawless, but I'm under the law of Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. So the week I became weak, and here it is, that by I, by all means, save some. What if it hurts your evangelism? A habit or a, or a thing that you have it really hurts your evangelism. Number five, and the most important thing of all, does this exalt the Lord? And that's how he ends all of this in chapter 10 at the end, okay? At the end of all these writing about this, what kind of liberty are we supposed to have? He reminds us of this. Chapter 10, verse 31. Whether we eat, whether or however you make your mind up, or drink, or whatsoever you do, do all. What's it say next? Glory to the glory of God. You do it because that's God created mankind out of the dust of the ground so that he would have fellowship. I still blows my mind that God wants fellowship with something he made out of dirt. He made us out of the dust of the ground and his great joy is that we glorify him. That, if, that don't, if that don't get you cracked up, something's wrong with you, man. God loves you so much. What he wants out of you is just his glory. He wants you to glorify him, praise him, love him. All right, so that's the things. And I'll, I'll leave those up. At least the last ones there. I'll leave these up for us. So knowledge puffs up. Let's get into the verses here now. Knowledge puffs up. But if you think you know something, but it's important for us to know. We, we should know things. As I said, I want this church to be the most knowledgeable knowledgeable church it could possibly be. I want you to understand. That's why we go chapter by chapter, verse by verse, line by line, precept by precept, because we want you to understand God's word, not just a few things that I like the best that I pick here and there, but going through God's word. But see if, see if I've been doing any good the last 30 years. Freedom, liberty is one of the keys to Christianity. See if you can finish these verses with me. John 8. You shall know the truth and the truth shall. Amen. John 8 again. Whom the Son sets free. Amen. 2 Corinthians 3. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Praise His name. Uh -huh. How about this one? By this shall all men know you are my disciples because... Man, you have love one for another, or different translations, love each other. Guys, we want liberty, but we don't want our liberty to turn into license and ruin our reputation. I'm in verse two and three now. We don't want to let liberty turn into license. Same time, we don't want to be a legalist either, do we? Some people in our area are so caught up in all these rules, and if you give them a new rule, they like the new rule too. They just like rules. Because it's easier to keep rules than it is for some people to actually want to be spiritual. Now, I'm not talking about everybody that's legalist, but those that are true legalists like rules because it's easier to do that than it is to be in communion with God. There's one old author. I wish I could remember his name. I wrote this down, this little quote from him, but he died about 100 years ago. But if I could remember his name, several of you would know him. He said, many Christians have sour godliness. They're never happy in Jesus. They don't want you to be either. <laughs> I know, that's pretty good, brother. That's pretty good. So we don't want to be legalists, but we also don't want to be have a license to hurt other people. Verse 4. As concerning, that, since he took verse 2 and 3 to just go off track a little bit, He's going to reintroduce the question again. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things offered unto idols, we know, here's something to really know, that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other than God but one. Somebody say amen. amen. An idol is nothing. And I always love this illustration. It's not mine. Cut from the book of Isaiah. But Isaiah is normally not a very funny man. But in this one chapter, Isaiah is just cracking himself up. And Isaiah writes and says, Concerning idols, same thing Paul's talking about here. 
A man goes out and he cuts down a tree. And Isaiah's just, you can just see the smiles on his face as he's writing this. Some of y'all know this very well. At part of the tree, he makes a table for his family. Or a chair, he uses several things. Part of it, he cuts up and uses wood to cook with. And part of it, he makes him an idol. And he, I'm going to put this in Daniel language instead of Isaiah's language. He basically says, you big dummy, it's the same tree. <laughs> it's the same tree you made a table and you burn up in the fireplace. But you make you an idol. And Isaiah says it falls over, so you got to put pegs up in it. Told you I'd look. You've done a good job. He just he just uses sarcasm, making fun of it. Then he says, oh yeah, if you want to take your idol to town, put your idol on the cart and take him to town so you can worship him. <laughs> and Isaiah said, we serve the true and living God. Why would anybody be this crazy? So Paul said the same thing. Verse 5 and 6. For there be that are called gods, they're not God. gods, they're so-called gods, whether in heaven, whether it's the sky, the moon, Jupiter, Mars, the planets, the sun, whatever, you know, or in the earth, whether it's animals or stones, and people still worship the earth today. As there are many gods, as there be gods many and lords many, now he said that there's one God, that, that's, and that's all that there is, Truly one God. But to us, verse 6, I said I'd read verse 5 and 6, verse 6. But to us that know, but one God, the Father. And what kind of Father is He? Of whom are all things. And we are in Him. If you have a different translation, it might say for Him. Both of them are property. We're in Him and we're for Him. And there's one Lord. Capital L, not small like up above that. There's one Jehovah, Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. See, Jehovah doesn't just refer to the Father. Jehovah is God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. One Lord, Jesus is his name and Christ is his job. He's the Messiah of the Jews and the Savior of the world. What's he like? By whom are all things? He is the creator of all things. And we by him. So we are in God, for God, and by God. We are all of these things. That's what he's done for us, church. Hallelujah, Paul's saying. We're in him. Verse 7 is a key to understanding. This chapter in particular. How be it? There's not every man that hath not. But every man. How be it? There is not in every man that knowledge. The knowledge that an idol is just a, nothing. For someone's conscious of the idol, that some of them are still so tied to, they're just fresh out of, uh, of this, or they may have been saved for a few years, but they still cannot get over how committed they were to the idols. With conscious of the idol until this hour, eating it as a thing offered to the idol, their conscious being weak is defiled. Now, first of all, the word defiled there is a terrible word. Paul uses the word, are you ready for this? That means to soil yourself. They are defiled. It's like it's like it's like they're messed theirself. Do you really want to do that to another Christian? Well, he's not there. He just said that's what happens to them. They are defiled. They don't have this knowledge. They are defiled. So here's the key. Not everybody understands. You may have complete freedom for your wife for you to cut your hair. Oh, here's another one. I forgot. I, I got some of my mother's list, but I don't think I put this on my list. Women wear makeup. Oh, I'll never forget as a little kid at church because a lot of people in our church was really hard against makeup. We had this one preacher, though. He just traveled through. We'd see him about once or twice every year. He came to preach. And I, think, I don't remember if Gordy or Oak was pastor there then, but the pastor asked him to share the word of God. And he got up. I don't know if he was in a mood or what, but he said this. There's a question about whether women should wear makeup or not. Looking around this church, some of you need to. <laughs> <laughs> I looked in and I thought, 
preach it, brother. We got some ugly women in this church. I, I little kid, I got, no, dad would not, he would not care one little bit to drug me out and took a belt to me, okay, for smart mouth. I did, I just zipped her up, buddy, kept her quiet. You know, I, I heard some other people joking, say if a bar needs paint, paint it, you know, but I mean, he just said it. You know. All right, now. So there's some people that don't have that liberty. We are, and they would actually soil them if they were to wear makeup without knowledge. So Paul is saying, you know, hey guys, let's, let's kind, of, kind of temper this. You say, well, I want them to grow up. They need to grow up. Well, let me use this illustration. About everybody in here has, has children. You, you, you remember when your children were young? Some of you still have young children. Okay. You go to put them at bed, to bed at night. And they say, I'm afraid. Now you have knowledge that there's nothing for them to be afraid of. But do you look at your child and say, look here, stupid. There's nothing in here tonight that ain't in here today. Well, that could be worse than they could be afraid all day long. So. But, uh, but you say, uh, let me logically explain the physics of this to you, son. You wouldn't do that, would you? No, out of love, you say, God will take care of you, and I'll be God's little helper tonight. And you can count on me. And i tell you what, I'll leave the door cracked, and I'll leave a light on way at the other end of the house, so at least it won't be dark in here. That way it won't hurt your eyes, sleeping with a light, and it'll, it'll give you a little... And then, now, hopefully now, guys, if you're still doing that when they're 18, you, you need to help them grow up a little bit, okay? But... Would you? Why should you treat another Christian that Jesus died for with any less love than you treat your own young? Ain't nobody gonna say that. It's all right, guys. I'll teach them. I'll go right to the house and try to sell them Mary Kay. The people, the people still sell Mary Kay. Okay. All right. So, so here's the thing, guys. You gotta show respect to people. Now, verse eight through thirteen. I want to read all together in just a minute. But I'm going to give you a list from my childhood that, and, and, and even recently, more recently about the cell phones, people that think that certain things are dead, they don't think, they know that these things are sin. Now there's no, they can't show any scripture for it, either to condemn it or to commend it. But nonetheless, this is how their conscience feels. Okay, let me go through this list with you. I'm sure I, I could put another dozen here. I'm just the ones that hit my mind yesterday or Friday. Dancing. Can Christians dance? Well, of course, Christians should not be dancing lewdly, sexually. That's, that's not a matter of dancing. That's a matter of, of against Almighty God and morality. But is it wrong for a husband or wife or for, for grown people that are dating to have dinner and then to dance together? Tobacco. Well, the tobacco could hurt your body. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. You know, most of the people I hear saying that, I want to say and I do. Especially if they're just them and me talking and they're another preacher. I say, brother, and I packed your old big fat bellies. I'm not sure whether tobacco's wrong, but I'm positive gluttony's wrong. It's right there in the good book and you don't have to guess about it. Playing games on Sunday. Can you... I remember growing up and been a real tough discussion about whether or not we could play football in the road uh, on Sunday. Could we go down to scout bottom and throw the ball? You know, was that allowed? And some people say, but it's a Sabbath day. Finally, somebody said, it's not a Sabbath day. Sabbath day is Saturday. And we don't celebrate the, crea the creation. We celebrate the recreation. Same things I said to you for the last 30 years I learned as a child. So finally we decided we could play. We could play games on Sunday. Mixed bathing. And I'll never forget the first time I heard that one. Debbie's laughing already. We'd moved to Tennessee. And I'd already been ordained. And I was going to I'd start pastoring a church. I was moving my credentials to a church to the, to the conference down in Tennessee. And uh, they were questioning me. They said, what do you think about mixed bathing? I said, well, I didn't even know that was a problem. 
I don't, you mean people in Nashville, men and women, go to like Oriental Bass and they, no, son, because I was like 22 years old, right? These two are old guys, like 40 years old. I mean, they're just ancient, <laughs> old, old guys. They said, no. Boys and girls going to the swimming pool together, going to the beach. I said, well, I'll tell you this. If you was real good at Riverview Free Will Baptist Church or Spratchville Free Will Baptist Church, twice a year they'd load us up and take us to Logan Parker over to Panther. That was our reward. Oh, one of them got real holy. My wife wears more to bed than they do at the beach. And me being a smart aleck and I was darn dumb mad already. I said, I feel sorry for you, brother. <laughs> Did not help me one little bit. I shouldn't have said it. I know I shouldn't have said it. I knew he still don't like me today. Uh, you know, so, uh, but guys, it's a big, big deal. It's a big, big deal in some parts of our country. Mixed bathing. Now, of course, I'll make a note here. Yes, I understand that there are many at public pools and at, and at uh, the beach. If you have a, if you have a problem with lust, I'm telling you, a lot of people wear almost nothing at the beach or at a lot of public pools. You have to decide for yourself. Okay. But the fact of men and women swimming together is not against God's word. Well, no, I, I, I said I wouldn't tell my opinion. Okay, okay, may not be against God's word. Going to the movies. That was the second reason. It's got to that. Do you and your family go to the movies? I said, yeah, we took Mark to see Pinocchio. Oh, there. Yeah, bottom line, I had to write a six-page paper why I wasn't a sinner for going to the movies and why I didn't think that mixed bathing was a sin before God. They finally did, or they didn't ordain me, didn't they did let me transfer my papers. One of them said, well, unless you go to that movie theater, people don't know what you're saying. I said, they do. It says right on top of Pinocchio. I guarantee you, they know what I want to see. However, at your house, now I happen to know, at your house, you have a VCR. You go to them Remember there was VCR rental places there? You, people don't know what you rent when you go in there. Yeah, but I do it at home. So well, now wait a second. You said the reason I shouldn't go is because people might not know what I'm watching. Anyhow, I did not make a lot of friends that night, but anyhow. <laughs> Television, internet, drinking coffee, women wearing slacks, facial hair. The year that I went to the Bible College in 19. 83 was the first year anybody was allowed to have any facial hair. Couldn't have a beard, a mustache, sideburns, nothing. Had to be completely clean shaven to go to the Bible college. Now the president has a has a full beard. I mean, times change, things change, you know. You also couldn't wear wire rim glasses. I never did kind of figure that out when some makes money. But you had to wear plastic glasses like I do. You couldn't wear wire rim glasses because that's what hippies did. Up in there. So, anyhow, you know, so. Okay. Can men have long hair? Man, that was preached hard against. Playing cards. I know one lady that attends this church chased her grandmother around the house with a deck of cards. Because her grandmother thought, no, don't touch me. Never look at him if you touch me with them cards. She really... I said it was. No. Okay. okay. So... As I go through this, I'll be substituting some things in here. You'll get the idea because this is very important. You, you might think of a lot of other issues as I go through. Maybe none of these are affecting you right now, but you're really struggling with mm, something else. Okay, I know, oh, I know one that I should maybe put on here. People buying lottery tickets. A lot of churches will throw you out of the church for that. A lot of other churches, they'll talk about how many they bought that week, you know. So, you know, people just got different ways of looking at stuff. So let's go. But meat condemneth us not. And I'm going to say, neither TV or tobacco condemneth us not to God. For neither if we smoke or chew or watch TV are we the better. Neither if we eat not are we the worse. Now, what if people got that in their mind? That's what was happening here. <clears throat> Boy, somebody comes to them. I smoke cigarettes because I'm a lot better Christian than you are. I have the freedom to smoke. You still are in bondage. But Paul says, whether you do or don't, that don't make you a better Christian or not. That's not the, that's not the question. 
Well, I drink my coffee. I'm a better Christian than you. God said, no. If you drink your coffee, drink your coffee. But they ain't making you a little better or no, no worse. <coughs> See, some of y'all, y'all fine with coffee, but when I sit the back of y'all, you know. When I said lottery tickets, I thought somebody was going to slide in their pews, okay? I'm just saying, guys, you've got to take these questions here. And if it will hurt other people, or hurt you, there's like just give these things credence. But take heed. At least by any means, it's liberty of yours. And that's a cool word. The word liberty is the word exousia. It's the word power. Remember when Jesus said, wait, what do I say? I'll give you power. That's the word right here. So this is the power of yours become a stumbling block to those that are weak. Now I need to stop right here and tell you. It doesn't mean they're weak in intellect. It doesn't mean you're smarter than them. Or you're dumber than them if you think that something is wrong that they're able to do. It's not talking about weakness in intellect. It's not talking about weakness morally. Are you ready for this? It's not talking about weakness spiritually. You can be a very spiritual person and think that it's a terrible sin to have a deck of cards. You could be a great Christian and believe that. On the other hand, you may be able to be a great Christian and have a deck of cards in your home. you got to really understand, guys, the weakness is not spiritual weakness. It's not moral weakness. It's not intellectual weakness. It is conscious weakness. And that's not an unimportant thing. Verse 10. For if any man see you, see thee, which has knowledge, you, 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 you have knowledge about this, you set a meat. Maybe you go to the theater, which whatever you, you fill in your iPhone or your Android for your Android people. Shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? Uh, make sure that in all of this that your choice is about love. So here in this part, maybe I should have put this in outline too. I want to give you three be carefuls, okay? Starting in verse 10. Be careful. You may want to teach them to grow, but take your time, just like you were with your child in that illustration about, about dark spheres. I want to point out that some churches are very confused. We usually think that the do not your stronger has stronger values than the do's. The do nots. I don't, whatever, I don't play cards. Man, you remember the last talk we heard about that, don't you, still to this day, don't you, Debbie? They asked me if wrong to play cards. I said, they're wrong to drink beer. They go together, don't they? <laughs> if you play cards, you have to drink beer. I, I didn't even know that rule. <laughs> but we usually let them do not. Well, they do not. They don't wear makeup. They don't wear slacks. All they wear is dress. The men don't wear anything but long sleeve shirts. They must be more spiritual. We, they must be stronger. They need to set the standard for the church. No, 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 no. He's also saying that in verse 10. They're actually the weaker. They have rules instead of relationships many times. Not always. But they're the weaker. So the first do not, do not try to hurt them. Second, do not allow the weakest in the church to decide the church rules. Before I go as far as verse 13, wherefore if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh <clears throat> while the world standeth. Before I be willing to say, I will never dance. By the way, I don't, but that's not because <laughs> I, I have no rhythm, okay? I mean, I dance like a white man, okay? I just have, I have no rhythm. As long as the world standeth, listen, I make my brother to offend. Because people will take advantage of this. They will. They will try to get their own ways. Your drums offend me. Well, we better not have no drums in the church then. Debbie likes that bluegrass music. She can't be a pastor's wife. I'm kidding. She doesn't like bluegrass music. But... Uh, but people will use that. If I am very offended that when I come to your church, your pastor doesn't wear a tie. 
Now, guys, you've got to be careful because the word wound, let's go ahead and read verse 11 and 12. And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish. That's seriousness. To cause your brother to perish for whom Christ died. But when ye sin, by the way, the first time the word sin has been used in this whole chapter is right here at the end. What is the real sin in this chapter? When you sin so against the brethren and wound the weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. Man, that's pretty serious, isn't it? Now, if I thought that if I, if I didn't wear a tie, it would cause people to go to hell, I promise you, no matter how I think they choke, I would wear a tie. I'd wear a tie when I came over to the church. I'd wear a tie probably when I went golfing, right? If I thought that it would send people to hell, me not wearing a tie, but you got to be careful because some people will say, it offends me, brother. And they just want their way about something. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you be very careful about it, what it actually says if you wound. Now, this is an interesting word. We're, we're, we're almost finished. Wound. It's the last time this word will be used in the Bible. How it's used in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. All three the same way, the same night. The night that they took Jesus... And the, the, I should say by the time of the morning. And the soldiers are beating him. The word he uses in all three is this word right here. It's not translated that way in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But all three of those gospels says that they beat Christ in the face. Do you really want to beat your brother in the face? Do you really want to wound your brother? So it's serious business. Huh. And this one hasn't been said to me. Brother, it offends me. Some of your deacons and kids come to church on Wednesday night and they're wearing shorts like they come straight from their yard. Well, guess what? I, it, that's not a problem. As long as they're not being decent, you're going to say you're not going to follow Jesus because some five-year-old wears shorts to VBS. You're going to quit following Jesus. You're going to quit following Jesus because... A deacon comes and makes it to church and still wear a pair of shorts. They're not just a deacon. Other people, men and women in the church. God, as long as they're not indecent. What, you, you, what it is, you want to control everybody else is what it is. You want to be the one in control. Hmm. So be careful not to let them set the standards. Some people really bother by tobacco use. Now, I don't use any tobacco. But I'm going to confess and tell you the truth. I quit chewing, dipping snuff in 1983. And if I knew Jesus was coming tomorrow, I'd go get me a chew. <laughs> been, how long has that been? 40 years this year. And every once in a while, Tommy, I still go. <laughs> and it still ain't there. You don't know. I ain't trying to encourage you to chew, okay? All you women, don't no, no pick it up or anything. But you remember, we've had several deacons at our church that chew, and there's people really mad at me and, the, and other pastors in there. You're a deacon, they're calling my name. Chew that old tobacco. Don't chew it in church till you get to chew because he can't. So you get so you get to the parking lot and put that chew in his mouth. They get all mad, been out of shape. Well, I know people that quit reading, that quit reading Harry Ironside's commentary. Because Harry Ironside loved black cigars. Well, I didn't know that I'm going to burn my Harry Ironside commentary today. Or I won't have nothing of Charles Spurgeon because Charles Spurgeon not only smoked cigars, he smoked them at the church. You know. Well, they can't be real Christians like I am. Number three, be careful. Be careful not to sin against other people. The only time the sin is mentioned is right here, verse 12. The only sin is you being cold-hearted and not loving people. Because the main issue is love should rule your liberty. Let's stand together this morning. Pastor Sister Carl, she would come back to the piano. Today, our Savior has paid the price for you. He has died in your place. So that you would have true freedom. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. <clears throat> Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. You want to be free? 
You want to not go to hell when this life is over? Listen, if you're here today and you say, but I'm a member of this church. Are you a member of the church? That doesn't help you any. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? Are you following Him? I say to you that have never known Christ, to those of you that are living in sin, please come to the altar. Don't leave today not knowing that you're in proper relationship with our Savior. Let's stand together. We'll sing. We'll sing the first and second verse this morning. Yes, he is. Yes. Come back to Jesus today. I promise you, He wants to receive you. Those of you who know Christ as Savior and you're not following the Lord, today is your day to make things right with Jesus. Today, you can know. your head down tonight knowing the joy of the Lord having peace in your heart that everything is right between you and Jesus today is your day I know parts of that message is very uncomfortable. And I also know that we have to be challenged. And uh, I'm not encouraging any of those things that you don't do. I'm not encouraging you to do them. I am encouraging you not to judge other people because they do. And any of the things you do, I'm not telling you to quit doing them. But I'm telling you that you should exercise love over liberty that you don't hurt evangelism. All those five things. Those principles will go into the next message and the next message, even though his focus won't be love over liberty. It'll be other things, but this same big question. The Lord Jesus Christ is good to us all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He certainly is. Let's buy us together for prayer this morning. Hey, you know, I got a message from Kathy to re request prayer for Carson Stewart. He's five, has a brain tumor. The grandmother is a friend of Kathy's. They're going to be doing surgery on the 19th. And she also sent a link for a 24-hour prayer chain if anybody would like that to sign up. To sign that. up to take some minutes of the prayer yes. chain? Okay. Definitely I will, Debbie. All right. So uh, if you'd like to get that link, send Sister Kathy a message or Debbie a message. Or you can go ahead and post it on. Yeah, you can post it on the church web, uh, Facebook page too, couldn't you, or something? I guess. Okay, I figure I don't know how to do any of that stuff. All right. So, guys, let's remember that little boy in prayer. Remember Brother Jim. He should be able to come home this evening if things go well. Now, I know that will be a relief to him and to Kathy. Remember this little child in prayer. I can't imagine having a baby that sick. Thank the Lord Jesus. We serve a great and a mighty God. Let's bow our heads together for prayer. I'll ask Brother Danny if he would to please lead us to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day, Father. We Hallelujah. thank you for the message you delivered to us today, Father. We just ask the Lord God that our love will show for others, Father. That we'll somehow we'll bring them to know the Lord, Father. Father, we ask that you be able to prayer requests, Father, for this child, Lord God. You might just touch it. Touch its family, give him strength. And Father, go with us. You got to name the problem. Oh, God. Thank you.